Hey guys, Tennessee Yankee. Welcome back to the channel. Hey, today I'm doing a video that was requested uh, by CP Watching. I was uh, corresponding with him about my 445 video and um, he had mentioned that he found a solution to his erratic running problem on the 445. And I found another video um, on YouTube from uh, OM Fishing on his X485 where he took out the fuel sending unit and he actually found a issue with the fuel hose, just a small portion of it that was cracked and uh, that's what CP Watching turned me on to and so I'm taking apart the 445 today, taking out the fuel sending unit. We're going to see if I have any issues in there because what the cause is here is after the, the mower runs a little bit, um, it seems to want to miss like it's firing on one cylinder and a lot of guys have found that um, there's an issue with the small piece of fuel line in the tank that's cracked and causing the issue so we're going to open that up today uh, we don't have a video anywhere on youtube that i've found on the 445 so we're making one today so thanks for watching so here we are we got the seat pan removed uh, lots of videos on how to do that, so pretty sure you already know how, but I'll just uh, remind you here, there is a bolt there you need to remove 10 millimeter, a bolt there, 10 millimeter, and then down here on the frame, there's one here and another one right here on each side that uh, you need to get to, and that's a, a nut and a bolt, whereas this is just a bolt, so... I'll need two 10 millimeters for that on each side. And then you're gonna to wanna to remove the um, the light switch over here from the, I'm sorry, not the uh, the light bulbs over here, just twist them out of the, the light units. And then you're gonna to wanna to remove the uh, seat sensor. So looks like we got a little bit of dirt and crud here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that cleaned up and then we will open this fuel sending unit here and see what we got inside the tank. Got this pretty well cleaned up here now. Took some soap and water to it after I vacuumed it. The first thing I did was take apart this connection and for somebody like me who rarely um, has to deal with these electrical connections, they're kind of tricky sometimes. So. On this one, there's just a little pin on the uh, the male side here. So I just went ahead, when it was in there, I just took this tiny little screwdriver and I just pushed down on the pin here and that released it. But I'm already seeing there's just a ton of gunk in this connection here. So I'll get that cleaned up with some electrical spray and put some dielectric grease on there. But, you know, heck, that could be part of an issue right there. Um, with your poor connection. So next step is we will get these fuel lines off. Just gonna open the tank a little bit here. Let's see if there's any pressure built up there. And I think when I put this back together, I might put a reel screw on hose clamp on it. All right, there's one of them. Now these are the trickier ones. Sometimes they work effortlessly, sometimes they're more of a trick, but I'll just pinch our fingers here, see if we can pull this back and get my little screwdriver. That wasn't too bad. I don't think I broke it. That didn't sound too good. No, that looks good. All right. So now on top of that, I think we just have to unscrew this guy. Let's get a little bit bigger screwdriver here, give it a little tap. Oh, 
there she's starting to turn Careful again to make sure I'm cleaning this up properly. Because we don't need any of this in the tank. So we're pulling it out. And man, that screen looks pretty good from right here. So the culprit that everybody's been talking about is this hose right here on my fuel line, or on the fuel pump. And you know what? This hose looks like it's almost brand new so I'm not even really seeing an issue with this hose here um, but I will take see what it takes to take this screen off and just check that make sure that's clean inside but yeah overall everything is looking really good here the o-ring at the top of the pump looks fantastic Yeah, and again, that, look, that looks really good. So, I'm not sure if this has anything to do with any issue. Heck, the connection looked worse than anything for the electrical. So, let me take this apart, figure that out, and we'll get back to you. So, guys, for the life of me, I never did figure out how to get this off. And I don't want to break it. This thing might just be some kind of retaining ring that pops off, but I don't even know that I have the tool for that. But everything looks really clean in there, so I'm just gonna take a chance and say that's not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in since everything looks good. And the main thing I'm gonna do here is clean up this electrical connection. And we'll go from there. Some other things I've already done on this tractor is I have replaced the fuel filter, I've replaced the plugs, I have not replaced the coils. Um, I'm not even sure. My my last fuel filter change may have taken care of my problem with the erratic running, but I haven't ran it long enough to know for sure. It was the end of the season when I did that. So I just wanted to take this apart so you guys could see how to do it and show you what this looks like. But another thing I've noticed on some of the other videos is that sometimes the problem is these hose clamps are completely disconnected and sometimes the fuel pump isn't even making contact with that and so that the hose was disconnected there so that could also be something to look for all right let's go ahead and put it back in <clears throat> It's going to just want to sit right there. Let me check this seal again on the O-ring and make sure we're seated nice. All right. We'll go ahead and put this one back on. It's a nice snap we like to hear. And this looks like it's in pretty good shape. I know I said I'd probably place this hose clamp, but I think, I think we'll leave it for now. Let's 
seems pretty solid. You know, I'm just thinking one thing we could try, and this would be completely experimental, but we could see, I would assume, you know, this is our return fuel line. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll clean up this electrical connection and then let's get a bucket and let's turn the key and let's see how much fuel we're getting back through here. I know you're supposed to get like uh, 120 milliliters or something. I don't know the exact amount. I have to look it up again, but let's just see what kind of flow we're getting back here. I don't know if you guys have a problem with this, but I always seem to lose all my straws and I never have any spares around. I guess I don't need it too bad for this one, but it'd be nice to be able to get in there a little tighter. So as I'm cleaning this out, I took a little Q-tip to it too, and I am getting some grease out of there. So part of that gunk was some leftover dielectric grease. And I don't claim to be an expert at doing this. So if you guys have any tips or tricks for me when I go to reapply the grease, I'm just gonna put a little bit in there and snap her back together. But overall, looks pretty good. Q-tips, usually my good friend in the shop. This is a good project to do on a day like today in Tennessee. It's nine degrees this morning. That rarely happens here, but it's cold. I'm sure you guys noticed what I did. I started to put these fuel lines back on, but I didn't put the cap back on. That wasn't too smart, was it? The good news is everything comes apart easier the second time. Okay, I have this sprayed one more time. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of grease to my terminals here and push it together. Well, wait a minute. Here we go again. We'll push it together after we put the cap back on. And that is after we find the cap. There it is. And you want to watch your position here. Obviously, we have to be here for the hoses to fit. Go ahead and give it a few more taps tight. All right, let's put this connection back together. So now let's go ahead and I am going to get a container and actually test what kind of flow we're getting out of this thing. All right guys, I'm ready to give this a try. I got the 
uh, cap back on. I got the fuel pump line on and then I ran the return hose down here to a, a glass container. Let's turn the key and see what kind of flow we're getting and how much return fuel we're getting. That doesn't seem like a ton of fuel at all. This is what we came up with. I don't even know if that's discernible in this container. Give it a few more tries. Might have been the first one with getting a little bit more fuel on the line. So what I'm curious about guys is, you know, if I could possibly have a pump problem here. I don't know if it's okay to test this from this location or if I had to be before the filter. Um, I assume I could test it here as well. So I'm going to clear this out, do one more and then measure exactly how much fuel I got here. All right, guys, I found a much smaller measuring container. I figured I would pour it from here to there, but I might as well just put it in there to measure it from the beginning. All right, let's see what we got here. So, this looks much more favorable when you get it to this size container. So it looks like I have about 50 milliliters of fuel. That's a pretty good amount. Three tablespoons. Let me try it another time. And we're getting a consistent amount. We've got about 50 milliliters. So I'll have to do some research and see if that's the right amount, but that looks pretty good. I would say that the fuel pump is not an issue. And I guess the good news is that has already passed through the filter. Um, so we know that if that's a good amount of fuel, that the filter's not clogged. So guys, I was just refreshing on another video. And the guy, um, the fishing gentleman, he got 120 milliliters, or 100 milliliters at least, after he cleared out his screen. Uh, like I said, my screen looked pretty good, but I'm nowhere near that. I'm getting about 50 milliliters. So... I got to do a little more technical research to see how much we should be getting out of the pump um, or if I truly might have a fuel pump problem. So guys, I took that, uh, I took this back out again because I wanted to give one more go at this screen. You know, since I wasn't getting a ton of fuel or maybe I'm getting the right amount, I just don't know for sure. I did get this off. Um, it just took this little, it's got this little retaining ring here. Hopefully it's not a, a one-time use, but I just gently, you know, uh, hey, get my camera here. I just gently pried up, you know, in this area till I got it off, worked my way around it. And then I pried this off um, gently too, but it looks like this is a, a sealed unit. I don't see that there's any way to get inside of that screen to check and see if there's any debris or clog inside there. So I'm just going to have to put it back for now. I put a, a note on another, uh, my tractor forum, just to try to find out exactly how much fuel is supposed to be flowing through that fuel pump. Because again, I got about 50 milliliters um, 
and there's no reference in the manual that I can see on the 445. It just talks about pressure. So if any of you guys have a clue um, how much gas I was supposed to get out of that, comment and let me know. Um, I may just go ahead and <clears throat> replace the fuel filter and, and test that to see if uh, anything's different. I know I found one on Amazon that had some pretty good ratings. It was about $70 for the the whole fuel filter unit. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together, put it back in, give it one more test and put the tractor back together for now. Okay, I got it back on. I just took my time pushing it on there and went around it a few times with the small screwdriver. Hopefully that'll stay in place. Looks pretty secure. All right, guys, so here's my last test. I'm consistently getting just below 50 milliliters of gas. So I'm going to put it back together at this point. I'll wait for some smarter feedback than my own brain and uh, see what you guys think about the, uh, the fuel level here, if that's sufficient for the fuel pump. All right, guys, before I leave you today, I'll show you a few other little nuggets on the 445 here. Uh, when I had my seat apart, repainting the deck and I had when I had this off last time repainting the deck I went ahead and I had everything cleaned up even better than this and I just thought it was a good idea to go ahead and put Gorilla Tape kind of cover everything here I'm going to go over it a little bit more here with these lines that I just uh, had out and with this connector I'll just put a piece over here just to prevent any debris and stuff and chafing from getting under there so this has been on, on here at least I think since 2014 and, and it's still just stuck amazing so gorilla tapes pretty much the way to go um, another little thing I had to do here is I park my tractor underneath my house I have a little uh, double door room under there and the 54 inch decks too wide so I went ahead and threw one of these little bungee straps on here I drilled a hole through here and just drilled a little bungee strap on so every time I need to come in and out of the building that holds that easily for me and then the other thing I don't know if I showed you guys this when I did my review but one of the first things I bought when I got this tractor was one of the reverse pedals and some guy manufactured it um, off of uh, I think I got it from eBay at the time and I don't even remember how much I spent on it but this has been awesome having this because whatever John Deere had on there for that reverse pedal is always hard to get your foot on so that was the first thing I did is replace that and put the reverse pedal on. So that was pretty cool. A little setup he had there. He provided everything you needed and, uh, to adapt to uh, what was currently there. So, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I don't know if we found a, all the answers today, but at least you guys know how to access the fuel sending unit and get into that thing. And... Uh, We'll see you next time. I look forward to your comments. And if there's anything else you want to see on the deer, let me know and I'll make a video for you. Thanks, guys.